Hi everyone, my name is Peggy Razis and I am really excited to talk to you guys today about Cylon.js and the Internet of Things. So uh, over the course of these next 10 minutes, we're going to learn a lot about what is the Internet of Things um, and how is it relevant to our lives. Next, uh, we'll talk a little bit about JavaScript and why it's a great language for the Internet of Things um, and what you can make with it. Next, we'll dive into Cylon.js, which is a really great framework that makes developing um, applications for the Internet of Things simple and easy. And uh, next, then we'll just top it off with a live demo, and I'll show you guys um, just something quickly on how you can use the Mayo wristband to create a robot. So first, what is the Internet of Things? I think um, it's a hot buzzword going around. You guys have probably read about it on Hacker News. Uh, you know, just uh, there's a lot of things out there about it. But um, basically, what it boils down to is that anything that can be connected will be connected. So it's really just the concept of connecting a device that can be turned on and off with the internet. Now, that's kind of cool. I mean, it's been around for a while. And how can we extend this further? Um, and what's really great is connecting these devices to each other and um, fostering interactions between different types of things because that's really uh, where the magic happens and um, how it can be used for really cool applications. So what kind of things am I talking about? Um, so, you know, you see here we have an Apple smartwatch um, and it's a, it's a Friday night and you're hosting a party at your house and you're wondering, how much beer is in the fridge? Um, so then you, you think to yourself, and, and you don't know, but in the Internet of Things world, you uh, can text your smart fridge. And you can ask your fridge how much beer is in the fridge. And it'll tell you based on RFID sensors that can then communicate with your smartwatch to tell you exactly what is in your fridge. And then you can extend this further to other rooms in your home. You can have, um, you know, Alexa with the Amazon Echo um, controlling and automating your Philips Hue light bulbs, um, which are then hooked to your Nest thermostat to determine when and when these things can go off. And then you can connect it even further to manufacturing and interactions um, between different machines that automate tasks and automate robots that control tasks. And then you can just connect all the things. And that sounds really crazy, but it's not that far off. Um, there's a research firm called Gartner, and they're estimating that by 2020, these numbers are astounding, there'll be 21 billion connected Internet of Things devices with a market totaling $1.7 trillion. Now, I don't know about you guys, but job searching is coming up, and you know, I'm, I'm really looking to get into a market that's safe and stable, and you see these, these growth figures, and they look astronomical. Um, so how can we, as developers, get involved in this Internet of Things landscape? So here's the current landscape right now. Most of these devices are programmed in uh, low-level languages like C, C++, Lua, and Go. Um, but a lot of these devices are programmed in different languages. So you have a Mayo wristband, for example, that's programmed in Lua. And how can you make it talk to your Arduino that's programmed in C? Uh, it's really difficult to bridge the gap between these devices unless you have a working knowledge of how all these languages interact. And concurrency is really challenging here. I mean, you're spawning multiple threads. You're trying to track what's happening. There should be an easier solution, right? So JavaScript to the rescue, language we all know and love, and more specifically, Node.js. So why JavaScript? Why JavaScript for the Internet of Things? Um, it's asynchronous, and it, it makes it really, really easy to have multiple events going at the same time with promises and callbacks. And Node in general is really event driven with event, event emitters and sockets and being able to register multiple things happening at the same time. Furthermore, Node is really lightweight. Um, a lot of the criticism with JavaScript as a language for the Internet of Things is that it's a higher level language and therefore takes up um, much more memory. But in fact, Node.js is very lightweight and able to run um, 
on these resource constrained, really small devices like the TESOL, for example. So that brings us to a framework that makes it really easy to get all these things done, which is called Cylon.js. And Cylon.js is really awesome, but, but why is it so great? Um, well, it's a JavaScript framework, and it bridges the gap between over 50 devices. That's a ton. Its API supports HTTP and socket IO, so you can be listening for multiple things at the same time and constantly have that connection open between multiple devices. And it has a really strong open source community, so you're never waiting for support when the newest devices come out. There's developers constantly um, devoted to putting out platforms and node modules to make it really easy to integrate new devices into your existing framework. So what kinds of things does Cylon.js support? Well, you have your hardware, you have your Arduino, your Tesla, your Raspberry Pi, you have some really cool gesture control devices like the Leap Motion and the Mayo wristband, which I'm wearing now. And then you have other things like drones, light bulbs, robots. The possibilities are endless. Here's a really cool example of a guy using Cylon.js to um, control a drone with the Leap Motion from his computer. And don't just take my word for it. Uh, you'll have a chance to see it in action. So I'm going to do a quick demo for you guys where I'm going to create a robot using Cylon.js, the Mayo wristband, which is programmed in Lua, and eSpeak, which is an open source speech synth synthesizer, which is programmed um, in C. So Cylon.js is going to be the bridge and the magic that makes it all happen. So let me just turn off presentation mode. I don't want this thing to go crazy. Sure, we're good there. Okay. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sometimes this thing gets a little crazy. It only reg registers your devices uh, or your, your gestures about 70% of the time. I am a robot. I am a robot. <laughs> Look how easy this is. In less than 40 lines of code, you can have a conversation with me. Isn't Cylon awesome? Isn't the Cylon possibilities awesome? <laughs> are endless. Please give me and Peggy a round of applause. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. Just turn presentation mode back on. That way you guys can see the code and see how easy it is. Okay, so I don't know if you guys would believe me, but it only takes 40 lines of code to make this happen. So first, uh, you want to npm install Cylon, and then all other modules for your platforms, they're all individual, and you'll have to install them one by one. Next, you want to establish your connections and any other customization variables to control your devices, such as the type of voice um, or the speed, for example. Next, you want to hook up your devices your, to your connections above. That way, you can use them in your work function. And lastly, you just listen for events and do really cool things in your callback function. The possibilities are endless. I mean, four steps and 40 lines of code, maybe even less if you take out the console logs, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening uh, to me today. This is a subject I'm really passionate about, so if you want to find out more, you can check out the docs. You can ask me. I'd be happy to talk your ear off about it. Um, you could check out my GitHub as well for some more projects with the Mayo. Um, and then also, lastly, another resource with great articles um, and other documentation for the Internet of Things. Thanks, guys.